I'm Sean Worthington, the inventor of the Rata and CloudCoin. I'm going to show you how CloudCoin works. I'll start by giving you a brief overview, then I'll show you the actual software, and then we'll have a discussion. Suppose that you have a file. This file is called a CloudCoin. The file has data inside of it. It's got a serial number and a whole bunch of passwords we call authenticity numbers. You want to buy something from me, and so you send me the file in, say, an email, or it could be any kind of message. Now we both have the file. Same serial numbers, same passwords. Now anybody with the passwords can change them. And so I go to the Rata and I change all the numbers. This makes me the new owner. Now let's take a look at the software that makes this possible. So here I've received a PNG file. It's in my download folder. And the PNG file, if I double click on it, is a CloudCoin note. It says 15 CloudCoins. Let's say that you sent this to me and I'm going to take ownership of it so I'm going to change all of the passwords that are inside of it. So to do this I need some software and there's lots of different types of software that does this but I'm going to choose the CloudCoin Manager. This is our premier desktop software. I'm going to go to New Transaction, Import, and then I'm going to choose the file that I want to import. I'll also leave a comment that will go in my transaction records. And these are my transaction records that I can delete. They're not public. Nobody else can see them. Now we're finished. I just clicked Import. It says Coins Attempted 15, Coins Authentic 15. I can take a look at the details of the transaction by going into See, Re uh, see Receipts. And I can see that I've got the serial numbers of coins here, the results of the import, and also the status that every single Rata responded with. So here I have a whole bunch of P's that mean pass. And then I've got a U here in which means that Rata was not available and so it wasn't tried. Now let's talk about some of the achievements of CloudCoin. And we'll also talk about some issues that people have concerns with. CloudCoin is the first true digital cash. Just like dollars or coins, if you possess those, then you're the owner. But when we go to exchange them, there's no transaction record and there's no identifying information, meaning that we don't have to have accounts or usernames and passwords. It takes us less than half a second in order to transact and in my demonstration you saw how fast it was. CloudCoin is also the most scalable digital currency. It can handle the transactions of everybody in the world. CloudCoin is the most energy efficient digital currency or any currency for that matter. CloudCoin uses less electricity than an average household in America. And CloudCoin is free. Now you might wonder why it is free. Well it's so inexpensive that the 25 Rata administrators can just volunteer their work. CloudCoin is also quantum safe. This means that quantum computers are not able to crack it. Quantum computers can employ something called Shor's algorithm in order to crack public key encryption which is used by blockchain. So CloudCoin transactions are secure now and in the future. CloudCoins have a fixed amount and that means that there's no inflation and there can be no dilution. Cloud coins can be split like a stock if we need more of them. But in this case, there's no dilution because everybody ends up with the same percentage of cloud coins. Cloud coin separates the data layer from the logical layer. This is not the same with blockchain. Because we separate the data from logic, cloud coin can be stored inside of programs. In fact, cloud coin is the first crossover currency that can go from the real world into virtual reality, traded around inside, and then brought back out. In short, CloudCoin is designed to be the perfect currency, and it is very unlikely that any currency will come along that is better. Now let's talk about some of the concerns of CloudCoin. And I'll start by explaining the different types of architecture that are available to us. And those architectures are usually peer-to-peer -peer and client-server. Bitcoin uses peer-to-peer. -peer. 
This means that all of the nodes on the network have equal power and responsibility. This makes a completely decentralized system, but it has some problems. These problems have to do with performance. Bitcoin is very slow and it is not scalable, which means that the more people that use it, the slower it gets until finally people are locked out or it becomes so slow that nobody can use it. These problems could be easily solved with a client server model, but client server models are vulnerable to attacks. And so a hacker or a government or tech giant could easily take down a client server architecture or any kind of currency that was based on that. Some currencies such as EOS have tried to gain performance by reducing the number of nodes and by creating master nodes. EOS has 21 master nodes. The clients can talk to any one of these nodes and then the nodes will synchronize. Unfortunately, these nodes can become centralized. EOS's protocol was to allow people to vote on who they want the nodes to be. Unfortunately, because of these votes, majority of these master nodes are now either located in China or run by Chinese, which makes you wonder if they're not run by the Chinese Communist government. That system, in my opinion, did not work. Cloudcoin's architecture is called RADA, the Redundant Array of Independent Detection Agents. This system has been working since 2016 and has never gone down and has never had any coins lose their integrity. This system, RADA, is based on another system called the Root DNS system. The Root DNS system was created in 1985 and since it was created it has never gone down or been compromised. The Root DNS system is a system that every hacker, every government, every tech giant would love to take control of because whoever runs the Root DNS servers can control the traffic of the world. So how does the root DNS servers work and how does the RADA work? Redundancy. Suppose that somebody wanted to buy something from you and so they gave you a silver dollar but you weren't sure if the dollar was authentic or not. What you could do is you could take that coin to a coin dealer and ask them if it's authentic. But what if the coin dealer was corrupted and said no that's not authentic he was just trying to steal the coin from you. What we could do is go to 25 different coin dealers. Not just ones in your hometown, but ones all across the world. One in Argentina, one in Africa, one in Malaysia, one in Russia, one in Canada, all over the world. In different jurisdictions, these coin shops would be run by different people. After you gained all this information, you could make a decision whether that coin was authentic, and it's your decision. It's not a consensus. Remember that consensus is not truth. If I read in the newspaper that Argentina has been taken over by a communist government and they've seized the RADA there, then we can just remove that RADA from our group of trusted servers that we're going to authenticate with. Systems that depend on consensus can be taken over. The Chinese probably have a plan to just introduce 100,000 servers whenever they want to take over different blockchains. And Quantum computers will soon be able to crack the public key encryption in which cryptocurrencies rely on. With redundant systems, we know who's running the systems. We know who the administrators are. And if we don't trust them, we can remove them and replace them with other people. This is the same way it works with the root DNS servers. There are only 13 of them. Everybody knows who they are and where they're located. But they're never attacked, at least successfully. And the reason is to do so would be a complete waste of time and make the attacker look like a fool. It's the same thing with the RADA. To learn more about Cloudcoin and the RADA, please visit my LinkedIn account. I've got lots of articles there. And visit cloudcoin.global. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.